Good Monday morning prayer team. It is time once again for morning prayer and devotion. And I am excited to be with you again and, and kick off another week. It's going to be a great time in the Lord and fellowship with one another uh, in this virtual setting. And I'm so thankful for this opportunity. We have some good praise reports to share with you this morning. In fact, some awesome things. Our Southeast Regional Camp Meeting was a great success. Uh, Forty plus people received the gift of the Holy Ghost in the Friday night service. Several were baptized right there at Black River Coliseum. And uh, after the conference, we've had reports coming in from around the state of water and spirit baptisms over the weekend in their services locally. And so we give God praise for everything that's happening in the Missouri district. Uh, we had four first-time guests at Greater Vision yesterday, and uh, one of those was a parent of one of our new Job Corps students coming to church. Uh, the student was on pass and uh, for the weekend and brought her parent to church with her uh, on uh, the weekend that she was not even at the facility. And so we give God praise for that and uh, for another uh, first-time guest from our Mingo RCF ministry. And uh, in conjunction with that, they had 16 in their Sunday school class, uh, counting the teachers. So there was 14 students in their Sunday school class there on site at the residential care center yesterday. So great things are happening everywhere. And we're just glad to be a part of what God is doing. In our prayer request this morning, uh, we need to remember all of our military service members and their families, uh, praying for their protection as they serve our nation. Uh, the Dexter National Guard Unit uh, departed for their deployment yesterday morning. And so we want to pray that their families will be strengthened uh, during this time of separation. Also pray for Gracie and Johnny as they've been awaiting their next assignment. And we're praying for God's will for them. Pray for peace for Israel and Ukraine. Uh, we need to pray for unspoken needs for Tracy Powers, Johnny's family, Judy's family, Venus's daughters, uh, Terry's youngest sister, Robin Kay, Johnny's niece, Jessica, Belinda Stratton, Virginia and her family, and Cheryl LaChance. Uh, pray for Chelsea. This is Virginia's daughter. Uh, she applied for a new job recently and needing God's favor in that situation. Belinda is needing to find a full-time teaching position. We need to pray for peace and comfort for the family members and friends of, of several who have passed away recently. We need to pray for continued recovery for Lucy as she recovers from trauma sustained in a motorcycle accident. I remember those who have suffered stroke and are recovering from the effects of that, including Anthony Sifford, Buddy Randolph, Billy Huey, Carmen's cousin Kelly, Johnny's nephew Joey, Sue Morris's nephew Dwayne, John Sutter, and Sandra Julius. Uh, also Dottie recovering from a recent stroke. Pastor Christopher Dew with Guillain Barre syndrome. Brother David Kent with partial paralysis after falling on icy pavement. And JR uh, continuing to recover from a recent surgery. Judy Hardy. Uh, has had COVID pneumonia. We're praying for her complete recovery. Carol Dixon uh, just learned recently that she's facing a possible surgery. She desires our prayers. Remember those who suffer with back pain and mobility issues. Uh, pray for Marcia, uh, who is having problems with her feet. And the doctor is trying one more option before considering surgery. Uh, pray for those who battle arthritis pain. Uh, Judy Williams' daughter's co-worker had a car accident and has been in the hospital with a fractured vertebrae. Uh, so let's remember her in our prayers. Pray for those with stomach issues. Lift up Sherry, who is needing a liver transplant. Uh, pray for my dad, who suffers with Parkinson's disease. My mother-in-law, uh, Beulah, also with Parkinson's and progressive supranuclear palsy. Uh, Marsha's mother-in-law, Vivian, Russ. Um, Kristen's friend Matt, Tim Workman, also with Parkinson's disease. Mr. Jennings is a neighbor of Carmen's family uh, who's on hospice care. Let's remember him and his wife. Uh, Kenny Burns was placed on hospice care recently. 
due to um, lack of strength uh, from recent bouts of pneumonia and sepsis and his cancer treatments are currently on hold until he can regain the strength to uh, go through the treatments. Others who are battling cancer, Jim Ramey, Julia Nelson, Pat's younger sister Pam, Maggie Lowry, Marcia's co-worker's aunt, Linda Young, Rebecca Peterson, Cheryl, Diane, Heather Milligan, Dennis Phelps, Dwayne Lewis, Claire, Alice, Scott Lucia, Michelle Strain's sister Cindy, Marsha Moore's friend's grandparent, Daniel Dickinson, Valerie, Kristen's friend Betty, Ari Bowers, Jamie Joe's grandfather, Gladys Sims, Christine, and Jordan. Jamie Joe's cousin Maisie has a brain tumor. Uh, Darla Crane and Virginia Pride are going through precautionary treatments after being uh, declared cancer-free. Uh, Jimmy Warren, Cheryl LaChance, Brother Pulliam, Christian Carr, Titus Dornbach, Cindy and Lloyd Page, Tim Workman, Steve Cummins, Anthony and Michael Williams, Emily Stanley, Evie, Rose Brown, Rebecca, J.R. Johnson, Natalie, myself, Lola Dickinson, Kristen's cousin Grady, Holly, and Zek Osgood's former co-worker's husband uh, all need healing of diabetes. Uh, pray for those with chronic lung conditions. These include Nancy Collins, Carolyn, Gary Lee, Kendra Ortiz, and Robbie Northrup. Those with heart issues include Robin Felver, Donnie Wilson, Chaney, Doyle Mitchell, Jenny Perkins' dad, Holly, Amy Dees, Brother Mark Morris, Cheryl LaChance, Janie Parrott's nephew Blaine, Kelly B., Kenny Prenzel, Joyce Fisk, Mike Sappington, Patty Arnold, David Duggar, Jimmy Warren, Bud Taylor, and Michelle Strain's mother. And that just brought to my mind, uh, we saw Bud Taylor's daughter, Autumn, at a uh, visitation on Saturday. And uh, she informed us that her dad uh, is completely eaten up with cancer all over his body now. So this is Bud Taylor. Um, so let's remember him in our prayers, and we'll be adding him to the list of those who are battling cancer. Uh, Sarah Stroop, Marty DeLott, Riley March, and Carmen's sister Tracy need healing of MS. Tracy needs her home to sell so she can shorten her daily commute. Vivian, Kristen's friend's dad, Johnny Nelson's mom, Melana Cummins' mom, all with dementia. Ben Ramey's stepdad, Tom, needs healing of memory deterioration issues. Uh, we have several on our list uh, continuing to battle with shingles, uh, with kidney issues, migraine headaches. Um, we're praying for Stella, a child needing a heart transplant. Other children with heart issues include Brantley and Elsie. Also praying for Darla's granddaughter who has seizures, Tammy Lawson's granddaughter Emily with epilepsy. Bailey May suffers from hearing loss. Baby G has a lot of health issues. Abram has GNA01 disorder, Abel with PKU and autism, Tano with spina bifida. And then our other health needs, let's continue to pray for Cheryl Ogden, Bob and Shirley Perkins, Jessica O'Hara, Judy Williams' brother, George Tibbs, Michelle Clark, Devin Huff, Shirley Perkins, Bob Perkins, I think I may have mentioned those already, Robin Tibbs, Meredith, Kristen's friend Ann, Cheryl Chance's uncle, Marshall Link, Pat Wilson, Robbie, Randy Reeves, Venus, Lois Link, Eddie Potts, and Belinda's best friend. Pray for those in nursing homes and long-term care facilities today. Lift up our North American and global missionaries uh, in your prayers. We had a great service yesterday with our missionaries to Haiti and Trinidad and Tobago. And so encouraged by their testimonies of God's protection and the work that God is doing um, in their fields of labor. Uh, pray for uh, Pastor Hannah Angel and her church in Pakistan. They've been taking part in our morning prayer group as well. The Tamias and Pattersons in Ukraine and Romania, uh, persecuted believers and access challenged nations needing our prayers. The Haitian family ministering to our military families in Germany. Donnie Willis recently appointed as a Metro missionary to New York. Uh, as well as Jerry and Ann West and Tim and Rachel Richmond already on location and doing a great work in uh, Washington, D.C. and Detroit, respectively. Uh, the Castillo family is our North American missions focus for Missouri. 
for the month of March. Let's remember them and the, their work in Springfield. And let's pray for the spiritual and family needs um, on our list today. Uh, Marsha has a family member who's been having panic attacks and is in need of deliverance. Uh, Belinda has a family member who's been causing her some difficulty. And Belinda's been battling discouragement. Uh, Regenia has a family member with a broken heart. We're praying that God would help her today. Uh, praying for many families, the Cummins family, the Marlins, the Clarks, the Moores, the Williams, the Pulliams, the Biddick family, the Jones family, all dealing with some family issues. Uh, pray for Brother Mark Perkins uh, as he's on the road uh, driving the truck again this week. And uh, his wife, Jenny, has been in Houston for several weeks uh, helping her parents uh, prepare for a move. Uh, Matt and Mark and their families uh, need the Lord. Uh, we're praying for Jenny's sister, Lisa, who has mental, emotional, and spiritual needs. And then Dave, Marsha's friend, Ashley, Marsha's friend, Linda, who's needing healing and also to overcome depression. Um, we're praying for Terry Monk's salvation, for David to return to the Lord, uh, Colton to return to God, Rose Brown, uh, praying for her family's salvation and four other families that are on her heart right now. Our Mingo RCF residents, we're believing for an outpouring of God's spirit and for more of the residents uh, to be baptized. Uh, we're praying for our job course students and alumni. God is doing a great work there currently, and we're anticipating uh, being able to share more reports um, within the next few weeks in that regard. Jacob, Josh, Allen, Ashley, Dawson, Charles, Frank, William, and Dana are all battling addiction. Um, one of these is one of our family members uh, battling addiction very severely, and um, and we're really concerned um, that things are going to uh, really get out of control here and uh, end badly if something doesn't uh, happen soon. So pray for that situation as many of our family members are affected by it. And uh, it's, it's uh, really both, both parents really are struggling with addictions. So let's pray for that situation. Stephanie and her children need restoration in relationships. There's much pain and dysfunction in their home situation. Johnny Nelson has many nieces and nephews who need uh, salvation. Judy Johnson's grandson and Beulah Ziegler's granddaughter have been on our list for quite some time. They need the Lord. Jennifer and Brenda's family has a lot of uh, family members with uh, need of salvation. J.R. Johnson needs salvation. Jeffrey needs reconciliation in his family and healing for his wife. Shirley struggles with suicidal thoughts. So let's remember all of these as we continue to pray for revival in all of our communities and for prodigals to return uh, safely to Father's house today. Amen. Let's I'll take a moment here and um, we will see who is with us this morning. Um, good to have uh, Judy, Pam, um, Carmen, um, Demarcus. Good to see you this morning, Demarcus. Belinda uh, with us today. Johnny and Kristen, Sherman, Ben. Um, that's all that I can see right now, but there's 14 of you with me at the moment. So that is, that is really awesome. Thank the Lord for each of you. And I see more prayer requests coming in. Mike Combs has an inner ear infection and upper respiratory infection. Needing our prayers today. Carmen reports they lost three National Guardsmen and border agents um, at the southern border in Texas late last week. And I did uh, see that report just uh, yesterday afternoon, I believe. Um, continue to remember Belinda's needs. This morning, Kenny Burns, we have an update on him. He had a mild heart attack on Saturday. So this in addition to all the other health issues that he's been uh, dealing with. Um, Pam's daughter, Jenny, has flu symptoms. Uh, my mom and dad both uh, tested positive for COVID last week. My dad completely asymptomatic. Uh, but went to the doctor for an unrelated thing and um, was uh, 
tested positive for COVID after my mom had just tested positive the day prior. And she does have uh, some symptoms and needs a healing touch today. So, so many needs that we have this morning. We can definitely trust that our God will take care and, and supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6, we're going to be reading actually three portions of scripture this morning as they all tie together. The Hebrews chapter 6 says, But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. We look at Genesis chapter 3, and it says that the eyes of both of them, this is speaking of Adam and Eve, were opened. Uh, Genesis 3 and 7, and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And then in Luke chapter 5, this is a more lengthy portion of scripture beginning in verse 1 and reading down through verse 11. This is a familiar story, I'm sure, to most all of us. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Better things, better things. We're going to be talking about this for the next few days. Adam, Eve, and Peter knew what it was like to struggle with insecurity. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in Genesis, their eyes were opened to their nakedness, and they were suddenly aware of what they did not have. They tried to make up for it by covering themselves with fig leaves. And really, that's what insecurity is, is just the obsession with what we do not have and worrying about our lack. If we fast forward over to Luke chapter 5 that I just read to you, we see Peter come to a similar realization. Despite their hesitation to obey, uh, Jesus had just provided an incredible catch of fish for uh, Simon Peter and his men. And Peter realized at that moment how insufficient he was in comparison to Jesus. However, Peter found something that so many of us long for, and that is the the insecure, the cure for insecurity. He discovered this uh, through Jesus Christ, and we can break this down into four components using a handy acronym, REST, R-E-S-T, Realization, Engagement, Surrender, and Trust. This is the cure for our insecurities. When Peter cried out, Depart from me, I'm a sinful man, O Lord, there was a realization on his part of his insufficiency apart from Jesus Christ. Realizing that Jesus is the only one that can complete us is our first step in overcoming insecurity. But then there must be engagement. Peter decided to engage in a conversation with Jesus. And we must also realize that talking to Jesus about what we're struggling with is a crucial step to walking in freedom. We must do this early and often. Uh, surrender is the next step. The Bible is obvious that Peter, James, and John forsook all for Jesus. And our fig leaves will be present for as long as we hold on to them. We must surrender 
our own insufficient covering and our own insufficient answers for Jesus Christ and the all-sufficient relationship that we can have with him. And then finally, uh, there must be that element of trust. Peter, James, and John had the boldness to follow Jesus, not knowing where they were going or what they were going to do, but they chose to find their security in him rather than the comfortable life they had built for themselves. And as I think about that acronym, I'm so glad that I can say that I have experienced that rest in Jesus Christ, and I no longer have to worry about these insecurities. I'm so thankful that God placed his calling on my life at such an early age, because when he did that and I accepted that call, it greatly simplified the rest of my life. I didn't have to worry about uh, what uh, my path was going to be, because from that point on, not knowing where I was going or what I was going to do, I knew that I was on a mission uh, for the Lord and that he would take care of my needs in the process. So uh, everything that has happened since then, I believe, has been part of God's uh, plan for my life of better things. And he has better things for each of us if we'll just simply learn to rest in him. Amen. I hope that that blesses you today and gives you something that you can uh, take home with you, so to speak, today and apply every day of your life. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you again that you've given us this opportunity. You've given us a brand new week in which to serve you, and we want to do that today according to your will. We come today, Lord, believing for miracles among your people, thanking you, God, for all that you've done in these past several days. You're doing great and mighty things. Lord, you have answers for us today. Hallelujah. You have direction for us today. You have wisdom, Lord, to impart to us today. And we receive whatever that you desire for us right now, Lord. Have your way in this prayer gathering all week. Move in the needs, Lord, that are represented here today for the Dexter National Guard unit. We pray, God, for their deployment, Lord, to go well. In Jesus' name, be with their families as they're going through this time of separation. We pray for Gracie and Johnny as they're awaiting their assignment. Lord, we pray for all of our service members and their families. We pray especially for the families of these National Guards men at the border who lost their lives in the helicopter uh, accident this past weekend. God, we pray, Lord, your comfort for them and for others who have lost someone dear to them recently. We believe for peace in Israel and Ukraine. God, you are the answer, Lord, to the needs of our world today. Help us, Lord, to realize our need of you, God. Help us to engage with you, Lord. Help us to surrender to you and to trust you today with all things. Hallelujah. We pray for Chelsea and Belinda in their job situations. You see the other situations that Belinda is dealing with in her family, the discouragement that she battles, the need that she has uh, to secure a full-time teaching position. We pray you would move for her today. We pray peace and comfort, Lord, for all those who have suffered loss recently and those today who are needing, Lord, your help, God, to establish a new course in their lives. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for those who are recovering from accidents and injuries today, Lord, and recovering from stroke and from a major health situations. Lord, we believe, God, that as we call their names today, Lord, that uh, your angels are ministering to them and you are working in their situation. We pray for Judy Hardy and for uh, my parents, Lord, others who are dealing with COVID symptoms. We pray for Carol, Lord, as she's facing possible surgery. Those with back problems today, Elveda, Tammy, Jennifer, Terry, Johnny, Brianna, Pam's daughter, Jenny, and Lord, her other health need that Pam mentioned today, Cindy and Britt, Rebecca, Becky, Carolyn, Chris, and Virginia, all needing healing of back pain. Renee, Sammy, Sheila, Donna, and Chris needing healing of mobility concerns. Praying for Marcia with her foot situation, Lord, that she will not have to have surgery. We pray for healing of arthritis for Jimmy and Virgil, Rose, June, and Sister Judy's mother. We pray for Judy's daughter's co-worker uh, who's in the hospital from this car accident. 
with fractured vertebrae, those with stomach problems today, Michael, Olivia, Aubrey, Savannah, Amber, Heather, uh, Sherry needing a liver transplant, uh, those battling Parkinson's disease, those on hospice care today, those who are battling cancer, Lord, right now reach down, Lord, and minister to them. We pray for Kenny Burns, who has now had a heart attack on top of all these other issues. Lord, the others on our list today that we've mentioned who are battling with heart disease, we proclaim healing for them. It's with your stripes that we are healed. We have a promise of healing that you've already purchase for us at Calvary, and it's just as sure as the promise of salvation, Lord. You've already done the work, Lord, and we just reach up to you in faith today, God, believing, Lord, for the answers to these prayers. We know, God, that you're moving right now. We believe for Darla and Virginia as they continue their precautionary treatments. Maisie needing healing of brain tumor. Those we've mentioned today suffering with diabetes and lung issues, uh, those with MS and dementia and shingles, uh, kidney problems, migraine headaches, uh, every child on this list today that we've mentioned God and others that we don't even know their specific needs. Uh, these adults, Lord, we've mentioned today that have health situations that we don't have all the details of. We know that you're moving for them right now. Oh, God, have your way, Lord. Move among those who are in nursing homes today encourage them, strengthen them. We pray for their health concerns. We pray they would receive compassionate and competent care today. We lift up our missionaries globally here in North America, in our metro cities, in the rural areas. Lord, we pray today for the Castillo family, our own Missouri missionaries in Springfield. God, move for them today. We pray for Pastor Hannah and her congregation in Pakistan, others in Access Challenge areas. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray, God, for the Bryan family as they uh, continue their deputation, that they would be able to raise their funds quickly and get back uh, home to their field of labor. We pray, God, for these spiritual and family needs that we've mentioned today. You see the families that are struggling. You see the homes that are in a crisis and turmoil right now. You see those among our own church family that are struggling right now with family situations. Lord, their hearts are burdened, God, because of uh, their children who are drifting. And we pray, God, for every prodigal, Lord, to come home. We pray, God, for relief for the parents and for the family members of those who have walked away from you, God. We know that you're the God of restoration, and we believe, God, for every prodigal, Lord, to be returned safely home. In Jesus' name, for those in our families who need salvation today, hallelujah, for those whose faith is being tested, for those who are discouraged today, those who are dealing with dysfunction in their families. But God, we pray for strong families today. We know that you're able, God, to help us, Lord. We know that strong churches are made of strong families. But we pray, God, you would help us, Lord, as leaders, Lord, to teach our congregation and to uh, give them the tools that they need, Lord, not only to survive, but to thrive, Lord, in this generation and to lead others, Lord, to everlasting life. In the name of Jesus, we pray all of these things today. Lord, the needs that are being posted this morning, we pray you would move in each and every situation. We thank you, we praise you, we glorify your name. You're the answer for everything today. We thank you for this knowledge. In Jesus' name, we rest in you. Amen. God bless you, each and every one. Have a great day. We'll join together again tomorrow morning for another time of prayer and devotion. I hope you can join me live. If not, uh, that you'll be with me um, as you can throughout the day. Have a wonderful day in the Lord, and I'll see you tomorrow morning.